For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. Lever Brothers Company presents the Pepsodent show, My Friend Irma, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgot. circle of friends. Me, Jane Stacy, I'm a little different. I have a friend who goes around in circles. Now, please, don't get me wrong. My roommate, Irma Peterson, is a wonderful person, and I think the world of her. It's just that sometimes she does things that make me want to pop my top. For instance, the other night I was reading the National Geographic magazine, and I said, Irma, listen to this. A pearl diver has to hold his breath for two minutes just to get one little pearl. And Irma said... Oh, that's nothing. I know a girl had to keep her mouth shut for six weeks to get a necklace. <laughs> you see what I mean? Well, maybe today will be different. I've promised Irma I'd meet her for lunch, and right now I'm on my way to her office. Miss Peterson! Miss Peterson! Yes, Mr. Clyde? Would you mind stepping in here for a moment with your pencil and notebook? Thank you, Miss Peterson. Take a letter to the Flamingo Hotel, Las Vegas. All right, Mr. Clyde. Do you have a cold? No. Then for heaven's sake, what are you whispering about? Well, I understand you get more money when you're a confidential secretary. Oh, brother. <laughs> Incidentally, Miss Peterson, the hotel informs me that they sent me a night letter. Do you know anything about it? Oh, yes, I received it this morning. Well, why didn't you give it to me? Well, it's a night letter, so I thought I'd wait until it gets dark. <laughs> You're angry at me, aren't you, Mr. Clyde? Angry? How could you tell? Oh, you have cute little mannerisms like chewing your pipe stems into splinters and pulling your hair out. <laughs> I'm just getting ready for Halloween. <laughs> and, Miss Peterson, while I'm telling you exactly what I think of you, I wanted you to know one thing. Why do you insist on starting all of my business correspondence with Dear Al? Well, I can't help it. You see, Al's my boyfriend, and I keep thinking of him, and I... Guess I'd just do it without knowing it. Very touching, Miss Peterson. But while you're in this office, I insist you forget your boyfriend, you understand? But how can I when, he, when he's always on my mind? Isn't that a little unfair to your boyfriend, keeping him in such a dark, lonely place? <laughs> <laughs> well, I never thought of it that way. Now, look, Miss Peterson, I've stood enough of this. Everywhere I turn, I see that man's name. Al in my letters, Al in the files, Al in my memo pad. It's got to stop. Don't ever mention that name around here again. All right, Mr. Al. I mean, Mr. Clyde. Oh, Miss Peterson, will you please bring me a drink? Well, certainly, Mr. Clyde. W would you like a Coke, or would you rather have a glass of ginger ale? Ginger ale? <laughs> For goodness sake, what on earth owls you? I mean, ails you. <laughs> now you got me doing it. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Clyde. Oh, never mind, never mind. Just bring me my glasses. Your glasses? Yes, they must be around here someplace. Oh. Well, come to think of it, I did see them. But now I can't remember what I did with them. Oh, for the love of... Miss Peterson, I must have those glasses. I've got to be in court tomorrow. I can't read without them. Now, please, try and think. All right. Uh, now, let's see. Um... Oh, maybe I put them in the filing cabinet under C. C for glasses? Mm -hmm. Even knowing your insane filing system, <laughs> that I cannot follow. C for glasses? No, C for Christopher. Miss Peterson, what are you blabbering about? Well, you have to get glasses at an optician, and he must be a graduate from a college. And Columbia is the closest one to here, and it was named after Christopher Columbia. So I'll look under C. Oh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> well, it makes sense to me. Look, please, see who's in the outer office, will you? Yes, Mr. Clyde. Oh, hello, Jane. You're just in time. Why, honey, is something wrong? Oh, Mr. Clyde is furious. I misplaced his glasses. But he's been in a nasty mood all morning just because he dictated a letter to I.J. Fox and I mailed it to the zoo. <laughs> Is that you, 
you, Miss Stacy. Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Claude. Will you step in here for a minute, please? Alone? Excuse me, sweetie. Please sit down, Miss Stacy. I'd like to talk to you. I, uh... I understand Irma has misplaced your eyeglasses. Among other things. In all my life, I have never come across anyone so scatterbrained. Well, maybe there are times when Irma isn't too, uh, too, well, bright. Bright? Miss Stacy, Marie Antoinette was smarter than that girl is after they cut her head off. <laughs> and, and on top of that, she can't forget her boyfriend. Oh, he's on her mind again. Again? This morning, she typed a letter for me to the White House. I'm glad I checked it. It said, to the President of the United States, dear Al. <laughs> No, she was bad enough, but now with this fellow on her mind, she's impossible. I'm firing her. Firing her? Yes, Miss Stacy, I'm firing her. How would you like to come and work for me? Oh, well, uh, thanks anyway, Mr. Clyde, but I wouldn't think of taking Irma's job. Why don't you give her another chance? Another chance? Please, oh. Mr. Clyde, Irma means well, and she tries so hard. If she lost this job, it would crush her. Oh. Please. Well, I suppose I'm a fool. All right. But remember, if she doesn't find my glasses before I go into that courtroom tomorrow morning, she's through. Oh, we'll find them, Mr. Clyde. Uh, maybe they're somewhere in the apartment. I'll take Irma home and we'll look for them. Fine, fine. Say, by the way, Miss Stacy, does Irma give you much trouble around the house? Oh, no. Irma's perfectly normal. You mean she doesn't do things that kind of startle you? No. Well, I was only wondering. Good day. Uh, by the way, Miss Stacy, how did you get that lump on your head? Oh, well, we were doing some house cleaning, and Irma found a horseshoe, and she threw it over her left shoulder for good luck. <laughs> well, we're home, and we're still trying to find Mr. Clyde's glasses. Irma is looking around frantically, and I have never seen anyone go through such motions. Right now, she's in the corner, squatting up and down like a jack-in-the-box. Irma, for goodness sakes, why do you keep bending down and jumping up like that? Well, I'm trying to look under the sofa, but the radio next door keeps playing the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> uh, come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotsky. <laughs> Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little birds. One with the grace of a bubbling, the other with the mind of a missing link. <laughs> Look, Professor, you can have your little joke, but right now we're not in the mood for levity. Irma lost her boss's glasses, and if she doesn't find them, she's going to lose her job, too. Oh, that's terrible. What are you going to do about it? We've gone over this room from top to bottom. Oh, that's wonderful. What do you mean? Having a room with a top and a bottom. <laughs> Please, Professor, Irma is in serious trouble. I understand, Jenny. Maybe I can help. Irma, darling, to concentrate... First, you must clear your mind of everything. All right. There. I think it's empty now. <laughs> Good. Now, I will use what they call the association of ideas. For instance, when I say salt, you say pepper. When I say bread, you say butter. Oh, I get it. All right, now, here we go. Black. White. Dog. Cat. Wonderful. Now, glasses. Al. Irma. Peterson. Stop. Go. Please. <laughs> now, no, wait, Irma, wait. Why, something wrong? Oh, please, mm. Professor, you're just wasting time. Can't you see everything is Al, Al, Al? Irma, why don't you get him off your mind once and for all? Oh, I can't, Jane. To me, Al is like something unwordly. <laughs> Professor, tell her she's completely wrong in her estimation of Al. Now, Jenny, darling, this is not so easy to do. You see, when a person is in love, they are blind. Oh, I recall when I was courting my ex-wife, Sonia. To me, she looked like a little buttercup. Not till after I married her did I find out that cup held 300 pounds of butter. <laughs> so, you see, Irma, you have to look twice. But can't you understand? I love Al. To me, Al is the sun in the sky, the stars, the moon, the Milky Way. To me, Al is the whole plantation. Planetarium, sweetie. <laughs> you know what I mean. If I could only be sure that, well, someday he would ask me to pop the question. After all, you know, I'm not getting any younger. I know I'm an adult because 
No matter how much Al makes me bend down when we go on a bus, I have to pay full fare. <laughs> Look, sweetie. Come in. Hello, Jane. Professor? Hiya, chicken. Hello, Al, honey. Oh, Al. What's the matter, chicken? Al, Irma lost Mr. Clyde's glasses. So what? Refuse to get excited. And if they're not found, she loses her job. She loses her job? My goodness, what are we all standing here for? Do something, let's look. Oh, Al, it's true. You only love me because of my job with Mr. Clyde. Now, hold it, chicken. How can you think of such a thing? I'd love you no matter who you were working for. <laughs> Besides, it's only a matter of time when one of my deals goes through. We won't need your job. Not another one of your deals, Al. What is it this time? Painting gravel black and selling it for coal? <laughs> No, got too many friends that are forced to make that gravel. You know, breaking big rocks into little ones. <laughs> no, but this deal can't miss. It's for married men with nagging wives. A specially prepared lump of glue that looks and tastes like a lump of sugar. He drops it in her coffee and picks up his morning paper while his loving wife sits there with her mouth shut. <laughs> How's it sound, chicken? <laughs> What's the idea of her running into the bedroom like that? I've told her worse deals than that one. Oh, Al, it, it, it's not your deals, it's you. Who, me? You might as well know it, Al. The whole trouble with Irma is that she worries so much about marrying you that she can't think of anything else. But, Jane... Now, let me finish. It's, it's the same way at the office. That's why she can't remember anything. And frankly, I don't think she'll ever find her boss's glasses until she's straightened out romantically. Romantically, huh? You mean, if I was to propose the chicken, it would clarify things and make it possible for her to keep on working? Yes. Well, that sounds attractive. After all, I, I do love my chicken. Then why don't you prove it? Well, how? Marry her or get out of her life. You're right, Jane, and I've reached the decision. Chicken. What is it, Al? Chicken, Jane here has just made me see the light. How would you like to marry me? Oh, Al, at last you've proposed. Let's go. Yeah, well, hold it, chicken. Before we can go through with this, I gotta get permission. Permission? Who from, Al? Uh, uh, uh my, my guardians. Your guardians? Haven't got time to explain. Must see them right away. We'll have the answer in a half an hour. Oh, all right, Al. I'll be sitting here waiting to hear from you. Don't disappoint me, honey. I won't. How's about a kiss for good luck, chicken? All right, Al. Thanks, chicken. Quack, 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 quack. What's the idea of that? I can't help it, Al. Every time you kiss me, I get goose pimples. <laughs> Your winning smile is a Pepsodent smile. Again and again, people have found it true. The smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. Here's the story of a French war bride, Madeleine Swenson. Her smile won a passport to a bright new world. Madeleine was a Paris manicurist when an American soldier, Warren Swenson, fell in love with her smile. Warren returned to America, but began sending packages to Madeleine and always included Pepsodent toothpaste. Soon, Madeleine's smile was famous all over France, for she became a magazine cover girl. And recently, Madeline rejected a movie career to come to America and marry her G.I. in Mason City, Iowa. Madeline told us... I thank Pepsodent today for my big chance. Always now, my smile is a Pepsodent smile. Like Madeline Swenson, people all over America agree the smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. In recent comparison tests, thousands of people preferred Pepsodent with Arium over the brands they'd been using at home. Yes, Pepsi had won by the overwhelming average of three to one for its cool, minty taste for making breath cleaner and teeth brighter. Try a new Pepsi and toothpaste with Arium, and you will see the smile that wins is the Pepsi and smile. <laughs> Mrs. O'Reilly, Irma, and myself waiting to hear if Al is going to marry Irma. 
Naturally, we're all terribly excited, but Irma, Irma accepts it as an accomplished fact. Right now, she's checking over her hope chest and such contents you have never seen. Now, I can understand the negligee and the cookbook and even the Chinese checkers, but this I cannot fathom. Irma, what's the idea of the two cans of strong heart? Well, some of my friends, uh, my married friends, tell me it's a dog's life and I don't want to go hungry. <laughs> Great. Oh, gee, I wish Al would show up or at least call. I can't for the life of me understand why a man his age has to get permission. What do you think, Mrs. O'Reilly? Well, it's a sentimental thing. I remember when I was a girl and I wanted to get married, I had to get my father's permission, and it wasn't easy. Of course it wasn't easy. He was in the middle of building the pyramids and he didn't want to be disturbed. <laughs> So you keep me in stitches. <laughs> well, you need something to tie you together. <laughs> Why, you phony old Fritz Chrysler, you. Oh, please, Mrs. Oh, hold it, hold it, will offensive. you? The phone is ringing. Hello? May I speak to Miss Peterson? Oh, uh, uh, just a moment. Irma, it's your boss. Hello? Miss Peterson, I'm beside myself. I have all those briefs to read in court tomorrow, and I must have my glasses. Where did you put them? I, I can't remember. Well, if you don't find them soon, you're fired. Do you hear? Fire. Oh, well, Mr. Clyde, uh, th there's something I'd like to ask you. What? Well, before you fire me, may I have my vacation? <laughs> <laughs> you see, uh, you see I I'm getting married. Uh, Mr. Clyde? Uh, Mr. Clyde? Did he hang up? Yes, I guess he was so choked up with joy he couldn't talk. <laughs> Come in. Back again, folks. Oh, Al, honey. Oh, Al, what's a good word? Ain't no good word, chicken. Matrimony is out. Out? Just finished pleading with my guardian. Al, just who is your guardian? The unemployment office. <laughs> the unemployment office? Well, certainly. They handle all of my finances. Hell, you mean... Chicken, that... I practically got down on my knees. I said, I got a girl I want to marry. Will you double my allowance? They said no. So I made him a great offer. I said, fellas, if you double my check, I promise you I will turn down the next two jobs that come my way. <laughs> they just mocked me. Well, who are you calling? Only one man who can help us now. Who, Al? Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> Al, got a problem. Joe, I want to marry Irma. Could you give me a job? Yes, certainly this is Al. What kind of job? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. What job? Joe, I can't hear well. There's a bad connection. You say the last ten men who worked for you were executives? Huh? Oh, they were executed. <laughs> no, no, Joe. Want something with more of a future. Thank you, and goodbye, noble friend. He, he has nothing else? Looks like it can never be, chicken. Oh, oh, well, don't say that. Jane. What, sweetie? I'm desperate. Can't two people live as cheap as one? In the case of Al, I think yes, because believe me, there is the cheapest guy that ever lived. <laughs> don't want to be cruel, but think it's for the best, chicken. Oh, it's perfectly all right, Al. Let us not be bitter. Let us be gay. Care for an apple? <laughs> no, no, chicken. Think, think I'll be running along. Oh, all right, Al. Good luck, fellow. Stout upper chin. And as the Hawaiians say aloha, uh, that's French for off weeder same. <laughs> Goodbye, chicken. Irma. Irma, I I'm stunned. You were magnificent. And I thought you'd make a scene. Me? Don't be ridiculous. He's gone, so he's gone. Yes, he's gone. He's gone? <laughs> well, here we go again, folks. She's back in the bedroom crying her little heart out. Men, the brutes. They're only after what they can get. What are you worrying about? You haven't got it. <laughs> Jane, 
Jenny, darling. What can we do to help her, Mer? Well, frankly, Mrs. O'Reilly, I, I don't know what to say. Al has her so upset she can't remember where Mr. Clyde's glasses are, and... Well, right now, it looks to me like she's going to lose both her job and her boyfriend. I'm afraid the poor girl will get sick. Sick? My little Irma, sick Janie, what can we do? I think Al is our only salvation. We've got to get him to propose to Irma. Oh, if only I knew how. Well, there are many shortcuts to a man's heart. And how would you know? <laughs> For your information, when I was a young girl, I had plenty of bows. Of course, they're, they're all gone now. And I've only got one bow left. This we know. You do? Yes, the bows that have gone are the ones you wore in your hair. The bow that is left is the one in your legs. <laughs> now listen here, you. Oh, yes, go ahead, go ahead. Keep it up, the two of you. Don't worry about Irma in there crying her heart out. We are sorry, Jamie. I thought as friends you could momentarily forget your own differences and help me do something for her. Oh, we are ashamed of ourselves, Janie, really. I don't want you to be ashamed. I just want advice about how we can get Al to marry the girl. Well, now, Janie, a man will get married for three reasons. Number one, he wants children. Number two, he wants companionship. Or number three, he doesn't know what he wants and she talks him into it. <laughs> At. Well, the Martins downstairs, their son just came back from a honeymoon trip to Niagara Falls and they took movies of it. Yeah. Well, I was thinking that if we could show the home movies here to Al and Irma, Al might slip into a romantical mood and Irma will have a husband. Oh, you mean seeing Niagara Falls will give him the idea? Oh, don't be ridiculous. I haven't got too much faith in the power of suggestion. Now, don't say that, Janie. Many a man doesn't know he's hungry till he walks past the restaurant. And what have we got to lose? Well, nothing, I guess. All right, let's try. I'll go ask the Martins for the equipment, and Professor, you find out. OK. And I'll do my part, too. I'll go down and bake a cake. That's a good idea. Now, if Al gets belligerent, we'll have something heavy to throw at him. <laughs> picture equipment is all set up and we're ready to start the reel of Niagara Falls. Al is seated beside Irma. He looks a little mildewed. <laughs> it seems he was sleeping on a park bench and they turned on the sprinklers. <laughs> Irma has her little blonde head on his shoulder. She's wearing her most enticing perfume. Some girls wear taboo. Irma is wearing grab you. <laughs> We're all anxiously waiting to see if the honeymoon film will do the trick. Uh, all right, Professor, I'll go the lights. Okay. Oh, gee, Al, isn't this romantic? Kinda. <laughs> I can't see you, but your hands are cold. Chicken, that's a bunch of bananas you hold. <laughs> all right, all right, here goes. And now watch, everybody. Now, that is the station at Niagara Falls. And look, that's the falls. 65,800,000 gallons of water flow over it every minute. This is only topped by the amount that comes out of the leaking pipes in my room. <laughs> oh, what a fascinating place. Right, Al? Kind of. <laughs> oh, how well I remember the place. I went there with my first husband, Clancy. I remember him saying he'd give me a kiss for every drop that went over the falls. Or was it he'd kiss me if I dropped over the falls? <laughs> oh, what's the difference? It's a wonderful place, Al. Yes. Look at all those happy couples. It's enough to give a man ideas. Right, Al? Could be. Al, honey. Put your head on my shoulder. All right, chicken. Oh, it feels so good. I don't know what it is, but when you're beside me, I get the feeling I'm not alone. <laughs> know what you mean, chicken. Al. What? Look at the screen. Oh, yeah. See that little boat going in and out of the falls? Yeah. Doesn't that give you any ideas? It does, it does. It does? Really? You mean? Yeah. It'd be a swell way to smuggle liquor into Canada. What? Now, look.
Look here, Al, you can make a fool out of Irma, but we've had just about enough. Now, if you don't mind, please leave. No, Jane, I want him to stay. Oh, Al, even if you won't marry me now, you've saved my job for me. Oh, me? What are you talking about? Uh, come in. Oh, it, 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 it's you, Mr. Clyde. See here, Miss Peterson, it's six o'clock. If you haven't found my glasses, you're through. I can't wait any longer. Oh, Mr. Clyde, I know where they are now, and all because of Al. My Al. What do you mean? Well, we were sitting here looking at pictures of Niagara Falls and, and all that water, and I realized that Al had never seemed cooler to me. And then suddenly I remembered where the glasses were under the water cooler. How did they get there? Well, I, I was taking them out to be fixed, and I stopped at the water cooler to get a cup of water. But Al was on your mind. And you got confused. So I made a perfectly natural mistake. What? by your standards, is a perfectly natural mistake. Well, I put your glasses in the wastebasket and took the cup to the optician. Your winning smile is a pepsodent smile. Again and again, people have found the smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. That's borne out by the vote of thousands who tried new Pepsodent toothpaste with Arium in a recent nationwide test. These people were given plain, unlabeled tubes of Pepsodent and were asked to compare it with the brands they were using at home. When their votes came in, Pepsodent won by the overwhelming average of three to one. These people say new Pepsodent tastes better, makes their breath cleaner, and their teeth brighter than any other toothpaste they tried. Remember, that's not just our opinion. That's what people say. They say it three to one. They've seen Pepsodent with Arium remove the film that makes teeth look dull, uncover new brightness in their smiles. Try it and you will see the smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. <laughs> still has her job, and Irma is still single. Oh, that's all right with me. But I told her just what I thought. I said, Irma, if I were you, I'd forget all about Al. Why don't you play the field? And Irma said, Jane, you've got the wrong game. I don't want to play the field. I just want to go into a huddle. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, huddle befuddle, if there's anyone whose mind is in a muddle, it's my friend, Irma. <laughs> my Friend Irma is produced and directed by Cy Howard. Mark Levy writes the script with Stanley Adams and Roland McLean, and it's brought to you by Pepsi and Toothpaste with Arium, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company. Marie Wilson is starred as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conried was heard as Professor Kropotkin and Gloria Gordon as Mrs. O'Reilly. Music was under the direction of Lud Gluskin. An easy way to ensure your future is to invest in United States savings bonds. When you invest in United States government, your investment is sure to reap a profitable harvest. You'll probably remember the high rate of interest you were paid on the war bonds you bought during the war years. Well, that same rate still prevails. You can't go wrong when you purchase a United States savings bond because every one you buy is backed by the United States government, which in itself offers you complete security with every bond you purchase. This is Wendell Niles reminding you to tune in one hour earlier next week and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, followed by the Pepsi and show, My Friend Irma. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting Center.